Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Proofs Alive. We are so happy to see you guys. Um, something feels a little different. Is someone missing? I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Well, so someone, uh, the 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 big man, had a birthday yesterday, yes. and he is still enjoying some time off to enjoy his birthday. Um, but we didn't want you guys to miss out on the show. So Mickey, Mickey and I are here to to fill in. And we have a great guest today, uh, 3D Maker Noob. You may know him as, but also Joe Kasha. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to be a great show, even even without Joe. Um, actually, I guess it is. We still have a Joe. Yeah, we do have like, a Joe. And I, yeah, I we think have a Joe. He, he might have a, a second Joe, in a way. Well, we'll He we'll... might. He might, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll see we'll, in a bit. We'll see, we'll see when we get there. I mean... Uh, so, yeah. Why don't we talk about... Uh, this will go quick this time. Why don't we talk about our Prusa Printers Picks of the Week? I mean, uh, you can, what, go, what, can go first. Joe's not here. I mean, yeah. We can do yeah, whatever I'll, we I'll, want. I'll go first. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, I took my dog to the dog park this weekend. I got a puppy. Um, okay. Uh, kind of in the fall. And uh, took him to the dog park. And he wasn't very good about listening and kept running away. So, my wife and I decided we're going to try to try to do some more traditional training on him uh you know to get him to to recall back a little bit better and everything else and so my my wife was like you know we need to we need to go out and and buy some whistles some dog whistles and i was like why do we need to buy dog whistles when we can print dog whistles um so i have the emergency signaling and sports whistle here um by thomas um and it is I'm, i will spare you all it is incredibly loud uh, and it's it's got nice angles and lines on it, so it'll fit in your pocket. Hmm. It has a little lanyard hole here, so I can I can wear it on a string around my neck. Um, but we're going to print a whole bunch of them and train our train our dogs with the whistle. And you know, when you've got a three D printer, why not print the stuff that you need instead of buying it? So this is my pick this week. Do you want to want to? I want to. I mean, can you hear it when it? Right, when... I'll, I'll 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 blow it really softly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Have you have you so, tried this already with your, with your dog? Uh, yeah, I, I did actually. Like it, it finished, um, and so we started blowing it. They got very interested. Both dogs got very interested in it to begin with. Um, but yes, we're working on. Every time we blow it, we give them a little snack, and so they they associate that Pavlov dog thing. Associate uh -huh. the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. With a yeah. snack and yeah, the puppy is very very food motivated. So little little Kepler. I am as well, so I understand it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so my pick of the week is this uh, tape holder, or I mean, yeah, it's tape holder and dispenser. Uh, nice. it, I mean, you also have the blue tape, but we don't really yeah. use that with our printers because we have the sheets. But I use the painter's tape uh, a lot when I label, for example, boxes of food that I put in the freezer because I never know what's oh, in the nice. box. And when I'm masking 3D prints, when I'm doing some post-processing on them, and they're always such a pain to like rip and yeah, find a beginning. So uh, yeah, this is just okay. I will focus, focus, let focus. I guess it is what it is. Yeah. So it's two 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 pieces. Uh, this one uh, basically there's a thread on the inside that connects the two parts together, and yeah, you then just which way is it? Okay. Yeah, you just take the tape, you put it over, and yeah, you can rip it out, and it makes like a really nice and clean edge. Uh, the model is actually for a uh, half size of this. It's for 24 millimeter wide tape. I was like, I can probably just scale it, scale it to 200% vertically, even though there's a thread on the inside. As as long as it's yeah. as it's scaled both sides, and it worked perfectly. So that's perfect. I I have a. a slightly wider version here too okay I'm very interested to see if that same trick even still works a bit i i keep this around for masking off uh uh cuts for my laser cutter and so yeah so this is by fns 20 and it's yeah 24 millimeter masking tape dispenser that i've simply scaled along the z-axis by 200 percent yeah that's really great also I use a good bit of masking tape in, in my shop for glue ups of, of woodworking products. Yeah, yeah. So that would be super handy there because, uh, yeah, it gets annoying trying to get it started off of the thing when it when has you're a, to get a product little on. hole here. I'm not sure if that's for uh, like a wall mounting, but you could very easily just uh, drill uh, like two or three holes here and maybe attach it to a pegboard or something. Yeah. 
so that you can or, always or, just... you know add a add a part modifier and Prusa slicer right and put a hole in it yeah. in the, the the model right that, that works Boom. too. <laughs> um, maybe one little note is that uh, this part, there's some load on it, obviously, when you try to rip it off. Yeah. Uh, so there's a setting in Prusa Slicer in the infill section where you can say solid infill for area smaller than, and then there's like millimeters squared. So I just said something like anything smaller than, I think it was like 30 millimeters squared, just make it solid infill. So it's sparse infill in the like big section, but yeah. this is full of plastic, so that it's at least like nice and stiff. Yeah, yeah nice and stiff. Yeah. yeah, really, really, really great tip there. Thanks. Yeah, I guess you could also do a, a, a like a cylindrical or a, a, a totally. Box. Yeah, modifier and just say modifier there yeah, too. Yeah, and that works too. Infill, infill there too. Yeah. yeah, I I love part modifiers. Like it's so. Yeah. So great, all the things that you can do now in Prusa Slicer with all the part modifiers and, and things. So it's, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, all right. Well, so we, we have some news for you. Um, uh, first of all, uh, I'm not sure if that, that tape dispenser came from our organization contest, but I did definitely see that some, uh, there are some other tape dispensers out there in our organization contest, but our organization contest is now done. Um, so no more entries. Uh, and we are in the process of working through and, and trying to pick the winner. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of you guys are anxious, but there were well over a thousand entries this time. Yes, and so, so we, many. we need to we need to do our due diligence and and you know pick the best ones. So it's gonna it's gonna take a little time to get through. Um, I I made my finished mm -hmm. my first pass uh, on on my picks last night. Um, okay. So there, uh, yeah, there are so many, so so many. Yeah, yeah. Just scrolling through over and over. Um, so yeah, you guys did a great job. We will we will get with you guys very soon. Um, but you know, little bit little bit of patience as we we figure out the winner. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right. And Mickey, I think just what what was it yesterday? Yesterday, sometime this week, you just uploaded a new video. Uh, Prusa stories. We did. It's a rather cool one. When I first saw it, I was like a little bit concerned about the animals because just an unedu uneducated view on it was like, oh my god, what are they doing to the animals? But it's actually vice versa. It's helping them kind of very much. It's uh, a video, video about a rescue station and these guys that print little backpacks for birds and they track uh, how they fly around the world and they, they try to learn about you know where they might die, or uh, if if they release it into the wild, and if something happens to the bird very soon after the release, they can actually track it down and rescue it again, which is pretty nice. So it is on our YouTube channel, and it's pretty interesting use of our printers. Yeah, absolutely. Love hearing stories about you know actual real world uses for our machines, and you know trying to trying to save some wildlife is a is a great one there. Um, uh, new mini firmware is out. Uh, for those of you that, that recently downloaded uh, firmware for, oh yeah, there's the, the video. Yeah, there. yeah. Um, but yeah, for those of you that recently downloaded firmware, firmware 4.3.0, uh, we just released firmware 4.3.1. So uh, make sure to go out and download that. Um, it has just some hot, fi has a hot fix in it. it. You may not run into a problem whatsoever. Um, but this will will make sure that you don't at all. So uh, be sure to go to go grab that firmware. It, it was um, a really like a hotfix uh, for kind of rare scenarios. I think one was during the self test. There was one more, but yeah, it doesn't hurt to always be on the latest version. So yeah, for sure, update if you if you can. Yeah, uh, and you released a video last show uh, two weeks ago. Uh, where we talked about the new features on Prusa printers. Yeah. And as of the end of last week, all of those features are now out there. So uh, if you guys want to go check out some of those things that we talked about last week, it is, they are all live on prusaprinters.org. Um, and they're, they're available to every everything that's yeah. out there. Yeah, so, everyone. Uh, if, you've, if you've already uploaded some models to Prusa printers, now's a great chance to kind of go back and maybe do a little bit of, of sorting and reorganization of files within... Uh, within your your uh, your upload, so that 
it, it's easier for users to, to use. And uh, you can also upload more file types. So if you want to add some instructions or, you know, some Arduino source files or something like that, that's, that's now available. I actually can now think of about a few things that we didn't talk about. So maybe I can add a few little extras. Yeah, that, that'd be awesome. Uh, you know, there's the new text editor and like one of the, like some of the things that we do are not the super visible ones, but so you can now, you know, embed YouTube videos and you can style your text and everything, but you could kind of do that already with the markup language, which was really not very easy to use, right. but so, some, users, some users did it. So what do we do with all the like nicely formatted text that they've spent time you know, working on and now we have a different system that's not really compatible. So we went over all of these uh, kind of collisions and we made sure that uh, we converted those. So there's some really nice like side effects of all these things. So for example, everyone who had a YouTube link in the just, you know, paste it as a new line in the description, it automatically now is even for all the older prints, it had it, it turned into an embedded player, which I think is pretty cool. That's so, great. Yeah, so a lot of lot of backwards compatibility things so that everything still looks nice. And some some people did like a nice table. So we also converted the table from mar markup to this uh, new Visivic editor. So all of that should still be working very nicely. We also, I also remember uh, ma many like suggest. I saw many suggestions on Twitter about the supported formats. So we now have the other files section where, for example, here I have the Arduino sketch file, and yeah, we are we collected a lot of like new suggestions. So. We will for sure talk about those uh, soon, yeah. and we will consider adding some. Yeah, always, always updating, always making it better, which is you know yes. important. More, important. more updates to come. I don't want to spoil yeah. it yet, but yeah, the dev team just keeps working on several things in parallel, and you guys really like the devlog, so I think we will for sure do another one, and we will show you what's what's the next thing for Prusa printers that's coming. Yeah, yes. that's super great. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed seeing that. And yeah, I got some feedback that, that you guys do too. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to the next one. Uh, that's, that's a great job, Nikki. Uh, so what do you say we grab Joe yes, and, and bring Joe in? This, this right. stream is desperately missing some, some Joe. So. <laughs> this, yes, yeah. we, we need a Joe for sure in this stream. Um, totally, totally missing a Joe. All right, he's joining us. There he is. Hey, hey! Finally, right, a Joe so in are, the stream. Yes, finally a Joe in the stream. Joe, Joe in the stream. Uh, so uh, yeah, we are joined by Joe Kasha, uh, better <laughs> known Joe. as 3D Maker, but noob. Yes, and there's there's little Joe. Um, uh, for those of you that that don't know, uh, yesterday again was was Joe Pruce's birthday, and the amazing uh, photosmith uh, in a very very rapid time. Uh, turned out that little uh, that little Joe model um, uh, to help celebrate Joe's birthday, which was was very impressive. I was encouraging. I believe he did to... in like four hours. Which yeah, is yeah, insane. it was something like four hours, which is yeah, nuts. Um, I was encouraging people to to print some of the existing Joes uh, to help celebrate Joe's <laughs> birthday because I didn't want to try to convince a a designer to try to you know make something new in like three days and he turned it out in four hours which was just incredible incredible um but yeah so we are joined by uh joe kasha you guys know him as 3d maker noob um joe has been making 3d printing tutorials and videos for quite a while now and recently has has kind of shifted a lot of his content to to more mixed media and renamed his channel uh, Breaks and Makes. Breaks and makes. Uh, hopefully you guys are, are, are tuning into that and checking it out. Uh, it's really, really interesting to me of, you know, combining things together. And we're super happy to have him on the show to kind of talk about what that, that experience of that transition is, has been like. Yeah, great. Well, first of all, it's absolutely great to be here. It's kind of a privilege. Um, so yeah, my, as, as mentioned, I used to do mostly 3D printing. I spent, I think I started my channel three and a half years ago, something like that. Uh, it was basically just a journey of a guy who's never touched a 3D printer and just, you know, working my way from there. Um, 
me hence, hence having the, hence the noob name right like, yeah exactly exactly that was the whole thing like i was an absolute noob and the thing is the noob kind of sticks because i always want to teach myself something new i always yeah. want to learn stuff um so in the past year with the pandemic you know being stuck at home first of all printing a lot of face shields that kind of wrecked my brain with 3d printing um so i um understandable i spent some time wondering what i should do and i thought to myself you know like i i could th there are many things that i want to do and i'd love to share them but you know people come here for just 3d printing and i want to expand um so i took a very long time to decide to rebrand the channel pivot still including 3d printing still doing tutorials still doing reviews um, but also branch out into other media like CNC, resin. Um, uh, there's art going to be involved as well. I even got myself um, a, a melting furnace. So Ooh, I, that's that's, that's, that's going to happen as well. That was what I wanted to ask about because you're using quite a few like different tools. Did you already have like a nice oh, like tool shop? Or <laughs> yeah. So did you expand? The idea it? was kind of two way one for the channel to expand two to start my own business and selling sort of like not handmade craft but stuff like that mm -hmm. you know home decor and and yeah i thought to myself you know might as well invest in some decent hardware um and i did i bought myself a 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter Uznes cnc got myself a turning lathe a vacuum chamber melting furnace, mm -hmm. lots of, you know, woodworking tools. Basically, I want to workshop where whatever I can think of, I can do. Mm -hmm. Like, I have no excuse. The only thing I need now is a laser cutter, and I'm sorted. Okay. <laughs> yeah, la lasers are, are great. Um, uh, I I love all of these machines, but lasers, lasers are fun in the how fast they are. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything else, like is a is a process and a wait for and, and lasers lasers just get jobs done quick which yeah, is, is really nice but but yeah i i love the the kind of you know these combination things and i've discussed this on the show before of, you know people that that are mixing media of not just not just 3d printing or not just cnc or you know traditional woodworking but you know are bringing all of these things together yeah. and i'm i'm super excited with what you're you're doing with with breaks and makes um uh do you have some projects to kind of show yes, off what, I do. what you've so, been working on so far? This, so starting off from where all this started. So about, I believe about two years ago, I did this lamp. Hold on, you can probably see it better like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There. So this is like fully 3D printed. Um, it's kind of a bit over engineered. It's all lock in place. It has a fan to cool the LEDs. And it was kind of a bit over engineered. Like, okay. <laughs> But it was fun because, you know, it got me interested in uh, mixing electronics with 3D printing. Uh, one of my most recent projects is something I probably am the most proud of is my purge clock. So this is made with purge blocks from multi-material printing. This project has 3D printing, it has CNC, it has resin in it, it has electronics. It, it, the only thing that's missing is some LEDs, which I didn't just didn't have time to do. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, this is probably my, my favorite project. It, it looks saved, totally sweet, yeah. I, I've saved those purge blocks for about two and a half years, thinking that one day mm -hmm. I'm going to find a way to use them. Mm -hmm. And and that was it. <laughs> well, well, and it's great for all those people who complain about, you know, purge blocks being a waste and, and things like that. Like, you found a very reasonable, you know, usage for them and output for yeah. them that, that really made something beautiful, right? Like... Uh, in in many ways, that would be that would be a pain to to kind of create just naturally or just yeah, you know in, exactly. intentionally, I guess is a better way to put yeah. it. But instead, you know, having these these spares, you were able to to put things together. Yeah. Just before the stream, we were talking about how it kind of looks like the old school calibration image that yes, exactly. Some yeah, channels just you know that's what they stream and there's no yeah. content. So I think it looks yeah, really sweet. Another thing, like I'm fascinated with infills. Like right now, I'm going to be doing a project very soon with all the Ooh, sneak you know, peek slicer nice. infills, but cannot show more. On it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I, love I, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about slicer infills. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a bit different because this yeah. involves CNC, <laughs> wood, yeah. and okay. resin, and everything. Okay. Um, I the problem with infill is there is nothing 
that you can do structurally wise with it because you know you cannot do a vase with it because it's porous you know uh, so i mean that's where this you, that's what i wanted in. to say you can you you kind of already did so this is like a gyroid infill vase it's cast in resin then it has some walnut at the top and at the bottom you know i turned it on a lathe this was like the first project i did quite a few mistakes with this uh, because I poured too much resin in and it started melting the filament inside. So it kind oh. of lost its gyroid shape. But that was a lesson learned. So definitely yeah. something Re to learn. Resin, yeah, that's the one. Resin is an exothermic reaction when it's oh, actually I, And the thing is, I I have one of... I had I initially done another one, but it completely melted. Like it started <laughs> boiling. Yeah. Smoke started coming out. I was freaking out in my garage. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah can, like the, get, the reaction is insane. Right. It can get quite hot for sure. Yeah. And like this is one of my latest projects. This is a... Yeah. A, a little lamp. So this is uh, SLA printed uh, in, innards, like the hearts. You have Pidgey on top and bottom, um, uh, an off the shelf LED lamp with a remote, and then mm -hmm. cast in resin once again. And it's just, they make awesome gifts. I made about three of these. Uh, this one was for my daughter. I have another one, which is like a DNA, which she gave to her. Boyfriend, which is a source. <laughs> I remember in the video you've you've sus suspended the hearts with uh, like a nylon yeah, string. Yeah, so this was a bit tricky because I didn't know if um, this would float or it would sink. Yeah. So what I did was I I, I put together some um, fishing line. Yeah. At the top and at the bottom, you can probably see there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there. just barely. Yeah. Um, because I figured it might not look that obvious. Um, but yeah, now I have, I just bought about 500 meters worth of fiber optic cable because I have another idea. The more projects I do like these, mm -hmm. the more ideas I get, you know, and it just comes to the point where I really need to organize my thoughts and just, you know, <laughs> do them. Yeah. It, it that, gets, it, it gets that, quite... that gets tricky just in and of itself, right? Yes, like... <laughs> exactly. Because you're doing something and you think, oh my God, I could do this. And then I did this. And then I go on Amazon and I start buying things to make oh. these projects. And all of a sudden I have a box full of things. I'm like, I, I need to start somewhere. Yeah. I, I have, I have a bunch of parts and uh, a bunch of, of wood and everything else sitting around waiting for my garage to get warm enough for, uh, me to go work on projects and I'm just just chomping off the, at the bit but like you say I just keep keep coming up with more projects that I want to do and just need to, to get them done yeah like for example at Murph there was a uh, print and play who was showing off his uh, ready printer one yeah. so I printed all those parts those parts and I have all the electronics but now what I want to do is all the flat surfaces I'm going to CNC in wood Mm -hmm. And everything else, I would like to hydro dip in carbon fiber. I, I, hydro you know, dipping. Just to give it that little extra. Oh, kind yeah. Kind of. So, yeah. Have you tried well, hydro dipping already? Or will that be your first time experimenting with it? It'll be my second time experimenting. Okay. The only problem is that getting the liquid, the activator spray, uh -huh. Malta, is an absolute nightmare because okay. no one ships aerosols to Malta and no one sells them here in Malta. There's very little you can buy here. I'll just have to, like, even casting resin, I have to get from abroad because no one sells it here mm. or yeah. silicone molds. Ha have you ever done any hydro dipping, Mickey? It's, it, it's fun. I know, yes, I, but I, I did. I tried to, it's awesome. It, it's mind blowing. It, it doesn't get old whenever I just see someone doing it. I'm just staring at it. It's so satisfying, you know, just slowly putting it in the liquid and then you stir it and it comes out so perfect every time. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was a really amazing project. It was done by, by a university. I forget exactly who it was. I think it was university. It may have been Disney research. I don't remember, but this was like, five six years ago but they they were actually using an xbox connect and some custom software and everything else and they were mapping um first they were they were like scanning in or actually they were they were taking the model that a 3d printed object had and then uh uh taking a texture map and pulling the texture map off of that and flattening that out so that wow. um you know it would it would fit the curves and then Printing that out in hydro dipping uh, paper, putting it on uh, 
on the surface and then using the connect to properly align things as it got got Jeez. dunked down in so that the the texture map would then rewrap around the object. So yeah. one of the the examples that they had was kind of like a, a tiger's face and so the eyes went to the right place on the eyes and the stripes wow. like followed the contour of the face. It was an amazing project. Um, I will I will see if I can find it later and send a tweet out or something about it <laughs> for anyone who's who's interested in seeing it. It's it's very cool. Right. So, yeah. But but even just taking normal the the normal sheets and or the printable sheets and putting whatever texture you want on exactly. them and then just dipping a normal part it's a great way to to yeah. add uh color and and you know texture to a, yeah. a, a and, and i mean a, that's that's another thing of 3d printing like you know hydro dipping goes so well with 3d printing if you just you know don't want something to look 3d printed yeah we just yeah. that reminds me of a really cool technique that i just recently saw in a formula manufacturer that uses our printer and it was fun. They they print the part, and then they, what is it? With you do carbon fiber, it's epoxy, and it's the the soft the carbon laminate. The yeah. laminate, yeah. So they just cover the printed part with the the carbon uh, textile and the epoxy, and then they had a showcase piece that uh, fell on the ground, and the inner plastic cracked. But it by the time it doesn't didn't really matter because. The plastic already served its purpose, and it's the yeah. the carbon that now you know has all the strength that, that they need. So yeah. that was a really cool yeah. technique as well. Yeah, and you can do vacuum bagging with that to get really tight textures and, yeah. and yeah. things like that, which is yeah, vacuum bagging's awesome. There's so many so. things like the, and that's yeah. the thing. There are so many things you can do, and I want to do all of them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. When you start kind of like looking outside the the sphere of just printing right yeah. and all of a sudden like the world opens up of all these techniques yeah. that that incorporate so well with 3d printing right like we're not talking about like oh go you know go do cnc and not 3d printing what we're saying is is do them together because it's even better yes. yeah <laughs> and yeah. so yeah, exactly i i i have someone from a major cnc manufacturer who uh who i'm friends with and and he's using one of our machines and he's getting super excited now about you know, things that he did entirely in CNC before, he's now mixing in 3D printed parts with his his uh, his CNC creations and, you know, loving how that's turning out. And a lot of that is easy ways to add pops of color or, you know, make make parts that, that fit in well, but would be kind of difficult to CNC out mm -hmm. just, you know, with a, a normal kind of, you know, two and a half D CNC. Um, so yeah, it's it's very cool. I think it's the when you only use 3D printing, it's like the usual the when all you have a hammer, Everything, everything. everything's a nail. Yeah. 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 So as soon as you kind of start to think a little bit, I don't have to literally 3D print everything. Like I don't have to make yeah. 3D printed screws. I can just yeah, use screws. Thing, like, 3D printing is awesome. You know, it just starts. It kicks off that creativity. But then yeah. you think like I can do that. You know, in a different way and add yeah. some more mediums and. Right. I was like, yeah. Okay. Oof. Uh, and and I'm sh I'm sure a lot of the things that you learned along the way of 3D printing have kind of helped you moving forward. Like taking that jump from 3D printing, where you kind of already understand the concept of G code and Cartesian positioning yeah, and things exactly. like that, moving that into CNC is is really helpful. At least it was I, for I me. Think what did you find? One of the thing that helped me the most. So four years ago, I had no idea about CAD design. Absolutely nothing at all. And, you know, I just started playing around with Fusion 360. And nowadays I can do part prototyping for customers, you know, in Fusion 360. And that mentality of printing without supports or how can you 3D print that, you know, the easiest way really helps you along with trying to figure out CNC as well. Because yeah. it kind of works the opposite way. So if you want to try to yeah. do an organic shape on CNC, it's not easy, but it's possible. If, if you think of it the right way, you just have to think the opposite of 3D printing. Yeah. So it yeah, helps. I mean, 3D printing definitely helps. Trey Very was cool. asking if you've tried or if you're planning any electroplating, electroplating of 3D prints. That's another thing that so I really want. I to really do. want to. Yeah. But once again, it's just a matter of finding the chemicals I need yeah. to use. Because all these things, I've literally, I've, I have them on my list mm -hmm. of everything yeah. that I want to do. Um, 
but yes, the the plan is that I will do electroplating at some point. Okay. One way or the other. Okay. Cool. I I have played around with it, um, with not great results to begin with, but I I kind of s- didn't know what I was doing well enough and was was skipping a step. Um, so definitely uh, zinc coat before you try to get other things because it's much yeah. easier to put zinc onto onto materials and then like copper copper coat or gold coat or you know whatever it is that you're you're trying to do in the end um i was trying to copper coat and i was trying to take a a you know a part that that i could already you know was already conductive and get that to be copper coated directly and i was skipping the the zinc transition and i think that was a big mistake so yeah um, for me right now my priority is actually finding um a can of paint that is conductive yes that i can spray as a base because see it's stuff like that that sort of holds me back it's finding that yeah. one thing and usually it involves aerosol yeah well <laughs> we 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 will talk we will talk later because you might be able to make some of this stuff so okay. i Ooh. i made my i made my own copper copper plating fluid um and yeah it the the fluid was the fluid was fine i just needed I, I needed to make a zinc fluid first, and so right, um, okay. yeah, so cool. yeah, we'll 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 talk about this definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, have you found any tricks that have really like kind of helped you out in in kind of combining these these mediums together? Anything that that you would say? I mean, I, I think I think you already kind of stated one, right? Like, don't cast large resin parts; it'll mi- oh, melt de- your, definitely, <laughs> your prints. Definitely, definitely. Um, secondly, if whatever you're going to do if you're going to do it on camera make sure you research safety first (laughs) yeah (laughs) not because like for example i um uh when i was turning i was turning i think the vase and at some point i had a working glove on to hold the um uh the 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 sandpaper on and the amount of people that tell me like you shouldn't be wearing gloves you're like you know it's just you know for for a bit of extra grip like it's it's okay but um yeah i think definitely safety safety is like the major concern with everything when it comes to cnc the one thing i'll always recommend to everyone always don't worry if it takes forever but always do a dry run first always because having worked on something for so long and then having the last step being the cnc and ruining it because like for example the 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 clock this Mm -hmm. one so i decided this was the first time i actually ever did a dry run um on on a cnc and the good thing about that was that when i honed the cnc or i uh on on vetric vcarve pro yeah i actually made that the home is on the bottom left corner whereas it was supposed to be in the center Ouch. and if i had put this on straight away mm-hmm. i would have completely ruined it so yeah uh, when it comes to cnc that's my biggest advice always so, do a dry so run first when you do always. a dry run do you just watch you do its thing and so i i tend to remove the bit mm-hmm. home it slightly higher and just see where it's mm-hmm. going alternatively just put a scrap piece of wood mm-hmm. and test it out with mm-hmm. that first Okay. Yeah, that's definitely it. Yeah, the 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 other side of that is is like we we tend to not have as big of a problem with failures in 3D printing because the plastic doesn't really cost that yeah. much. And well while, while time, you know, time sucks for everyone, um CNC when you fail, it can get really expensive quick. Yes. And so, you know, yes. when it when you realize you forgot to flip the switch to turn the spindle on on your router you drive a bit straight down into material and then yeah. go you've ruined the the chunk of material which could be expensive in and of itself plus you've probably snapped a 50 dollars bit um yeah. and i say this out of out of experience not once not twice but <laughs> yeah now it, yeah. it happened so, to me once that i forgot to switch on the spindle. it was literally just about to touch the word of my <gasps> spindle yeah <laughs> Yeah, there's, also, there's a lot of there's a lot of gotchas, and it gets. I, like I've recently thing. discovered that these things exist. It's a CNC pendant. Yeah, I had no idea these existed, and I just received this, and it just it has that really satisfying oh. thing. Um, so yeah, this 
this will make her life much easier, much, much, yeah. much easier. I, I have like, I have like a, a, a USB style, like, uh, like almost like a PlayStation controller yeah. that, that I use as a, a pendant. Especially mine having the duet uh, firmer on it. Like I have to keep the laptop always at hand, even if I'm moving slightly right. just to so something like this would definitely make your life much easier. And always, always install a big stop button, like a red, you know, just. Yes. Yeah. I think most the of my advice will button. come to CNC because that's that's what I'm learning the most. Right. Uh, so do you have some more, more projects there? I see some more stuff on the table. So what else? I have, this is something I've, I've never ended up releasing. Um, in the beginning of the pandemic, I did like, uh, this is an automated um, dispenser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's fully 3D printed. It can work on a battery as well. You just put your stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I did is because I made it with uh, an interchangeable back. This, this is before monotonic info. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of, one of the back plates is actually a hook, which I can put in the elevator of the apartment block here. So as soon as you go uh -huh. in, you just... Yeah. Um, so that's one of those. It's fully 3D printed with just a peristaltic pump and a sensor and a small Arduino inside, nothing major. Um, this is... Probably you notice a theme here. I love light, so I do a lot of lamps. Uh, this is a revolving lithophane lamp. Mm -hmm. Which okay. is just well, once again that, that spiral yeah. LED design. Yeah, exactly, and it works like with uh, an app. And this was at the time I can actually hold on. Uh, this was at the time where um, can you see? Yeah, now, now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When Game of Thrones Game came of Thrones. out. So. Yeah, before the last season came out and everyone exactly, was still like, excited exactly. about it. Exactly, and everyone <laughs> was disappointed, but let's not get into that. <laughs> I mean, at least you didn't name your daughter uh, after one of the, you know, your kids after no, one of the characters no. or something before no. the... <laughs> right. Um, I yeah, I mean, and I, as I mentioned, I do a lot of printed. I love, I love painting, so I have my... I like, this is my... Mm -hmm. Joker. Joker bust and but yeah that's basically what i do and lots of testing pieces this is where i was testing the um gyroid and fill mm -hmm. yeah just to see how it will look in resin because it's always whenever there's a project which involves something like this it i i tend to test first because i might have a ridiculously awesome idea mm -hmm. which i can never bring to fruition so first lots of testing lots and lots of testing and so you already teased that the is that your next project with the infill patterns? So the these yes, this is part of my next project. Okay. Um, it will involve wood as well. Um, I will probably include resin as well because resin and three D printing, oh, they go so well together, mm -hmm. and you can do some amazing things with it. So yeah. Okay. Uh, then there is definitely another lamp that's coming, and it involves there is the big red button. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I just I'm backtracking a little bit, but this was uh, this is a nice project by Paul uh, Arden, who's he's Definitely making something like something I should do. <laughs> yeah, just like it it looks so cool, just a pass through emergency stop that you can connect to literally anything, and yeah, I can totally see that saving saving you a few times. So that's cool. Yeah, so yeah, cool. and I also have a very ambitious project. I mentioned that I bought a lot of fiber optic cable. Uh -huh. So um, I want to do a very special lamp, which is black glitter resin. But when it lights up, you can see constellations oh, within the resin. Eight. Do I already see some fibers on the very edge of your frame? That's also like a lamp. This, is, this would be the yeah. uh, my... Um, my my fireworks lamp. Yeah. This is yeah. this was very simple project. It just has uh, an Arduino Nano and a NeoPixel ring mm -hmm. inside. Mm -hmm. So it's it's quite cool. The, this this was kind of like you know those lamps we used to have as as I was a little kid. I, I used to have the lamps with the fiber optic. Cables I remember them too. Was, yeah. And they were always so mesmerizing to watch yeah and and ours had like oil which used to flow down the fiber optic cables Ooh. like in drips it was so cool and it was always the kind of lamp that you sit down and stare for hours yeah <laughs> very neat so if people want to see 
these projects actually being created if they actually want to watch them uh where where would they go searching for well what? they could definitely follow me on youtube or subscribe to my youtube channel breaks and makes um i also have a uh twitter account currently it's still at at 3d maker noob i'm doing mm -hmm. the changes very slowly um for those that just want to see like the quick iterations of this part of these projects uh, i post short videos on instagram and also TikTok. believe it or not um but yeah that's that's and everything is breaks and makes or 3d maker new if you go on 3d maker new you'll still find me on youtube so. you, you, <laughs> yes. i just pasted the youtube link in the chat but i'm pretty sure that most of the people will already already know you yeah and be subscribed yeah, I, I, I'm sure that's the case. I just wanted to make sure that yeah. those, those who didn't knew where to I go mean, looking. I mean, people watch this even from the replay, so you're, right, you you, you should subscribe now. I can yes, see you. Exactly. <laughs> subscribe, <laughs> ring the bell for notification, and you know. <laughs> hey, I, I, got, I got in trouble for that the first show, so no, no worries telling people to subscribe. Okay. So. <laughs> Uh, so uh, this is normally the point where we would we would uh, say goodbye, but um, since we don't have another Joe on the show, why don't why I don't can just I, hang wait, out while I, we we continue on here? I I don't have my Joe hat because I do have a Joe hat, oh. believe it or not. Don't we all? I I, I love it, so yeah. I could just you know put that on. And... <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so. We have our our Prusa Live uh, Prusa printer or Prusa Live show us your prints contest every every show, um, and we have our uh, our winners for this this go round. Uh, thank you for everyone who who's participating. Um, we we really appreciate it. Now, uh, Mickey and I were talking about it, and a lot of you guys uh, give us crap for picking MMU prints so often. But I do have to say, Mickey, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just looking oh, through, through okay. them. Yeah. <laughs> Did it look like <laughs> the, I'm frozen? The way, the way you were lean, leaning over and not moving, like, <laughs> I totally thought that you had frozen. And okay. I was like, uh-oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, lots of you guys say we pick MMU prints. Um, I will actually say this week was a little bit hard to not necessarily pr pick MMU prints because you guys are submitting a ton, a ton of MMU prints. And we have a bunch of you guys that are, are joining in every week and submitting on the contest, and we love that. Um, but we, we, we've got a lot of the same people. So that means there's a lot of chance for, for you guys to go out there and you know potentially win a spool or two, two of filament. So make sure to, to, to send us your prints, because I know you guys are printing stuff. Just take a picture and send it to us on Twitter. So um, pound Bruce alive. Uh, all right, so who do we have this week? Who's in Who's in third place? So third place is not an MMU, MMU print, and right. it's a dice tower. We had a few, I think, in the in the contest already. Yeah, but... there there have been some really great dice towers recently, mm -hmm. and yeah, this in the Mystic Green just comes out so so great. So uh, the mimic made to to uh, uh, made after a D and D uh, monster, so it looks like a. Um, uh, a chest, chest of gold, and yeah. when you you go to it, it's actually a monster that tries to eat you. But in this case, you you pour the pour your dice into the monster's mouth, and they they roll out, um, and it's it's a really Brilliant. huge dice tower. Uh, and I kind of I really kind of love the idea of like actually taking a D and D monster and making it a dice tower for playing yeah. D and D. Like it's so. Rehearsed. I also really appreciate supportless prints that are yeah. so wild shape wise. Yeah. Right. It's... Yeah, that's someone who knows design yeah. the 3D printing right yeah. there, right? It's really great print. And that's uh, by so, Ed's yeah, can... Qual 15. Right. Congrats. Congratulations there. Yeah. Uh, who do we have for number two? So I will stop the screen share just to make sure that I... You know, we're upgrading. We, you, you can't see all the tabs immediately, so you yes. don't know who's going to win the next place. Yeah, so. I, I told Mickey that, that I realized that as he has all the tabs open and yeah. switches between tabs, everyone could read who the, the winner was coming up. And so. Not anymore. Okay, so yes. coming up, the second place is CJ Beck, who I'm pretty sure he he's, already... He's he's a regular. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, this is the, that uh, Kingfisher model um, that is just such an incredibly beautiful model. And I yes. really think this is a great take on it. Um, yeah. Beautiful color choices there. 
and he definitely has a purge tower that, that he that's, needs that's to, a to get sent I'll to take Joe it. For... I call dibs on the tower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every, everyone, if you have wipe towers, you can just send it to Joe. and uh, Just send them yeah. to my P.O. box. I'll take them. <laughs> There's a use for them. Okay, so that's number two. Congrats to CJ yeah. Beck. Yeah, and beautiful. coming up with the first place is rather original print, something we like to see, something unusual. Yeah. And it's Sammy Hendrick with his kind of CMYK, you know, just like you could use just a 2D printer, but that's boring, you know. Who wants a 2D yeah. printer? So this really trippy technique to create a color image with your 3D printer. Isn't that cool? Yeah. This is and, the kind of person Sa Sammy that I don't... actually go ahead, Joe. I was going to say, this is the kind of person I don't like because I want to be as smart as them. To be able to do <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I, uh, I, want, I want to be that smart. <laughs> yeah. And, and Sammy actually re pushed uh, two different models this week yeah. that were both very original techniques. And it was kind of hard picking which one was our favorite. Um, but I'm really excited to see what Sammy is doing in the future. Uh, and Sammy, I might be talking to you about coming on this show because I like what you're doing and I'd love to see more and, and find out uh, what's going on in your brain with this. Yeah, there's one of the this other This is ones. the other one, yeah, which is a uh, depth map from iPhone converted yeah. into, into a two-color print, which is also ridiculously cool. Right. Why can't I do this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> and whatever whatever software he's using he's used twice there if you go to the next yeah. the next screenshot or the next shot that's there yeah, yeah so whatever this is looks like the same that he was he was doing in the the other one too okay. so i don't know if he's if he's written some software or if this is something that you know i'm unaware of that's out there but yeah it is running on a local host over. which is suspicious yeah, I could, oh yeah, yeah. So it's probably something he's written for sure. Yeah. So I'd I'd love to know more about what's going on here. So this reminds me when velocity printing first came out. Yeah. Yeah. Do you recall that? Yeah. So I had seen that on, on Twitter from Mark Whedon, I believe his name is. And I had messaged him, I was like, could I send you a photo and an SDL and you can send it to me ready so I can print it? And then from the video, you know, a developer got in touch with him and then it became, you know, like this app you can download and that's that's what should happen here, you know, like yeah, a developer yeah. should get in touch and, you know, that make well, this. Well, it looks like he might be a developer already, like if he's yeah. already writing this, it just, you know, may, may not be ready to, to be released yet. So, yeah, that's another local host. Yeah. I so. mean, who knows? It could also be just, you know, something from GitHub that you run yeah. on, a, on a local server. You never know. Yeah, Either way, it's, it's ridiculously cool. Oh, yeah, this I, I will, I will be reaching out to him about his his contest win, but I will also be finding out more about what's going on here because it is super cool. That is very small web tower. I think Joe, this is not very interesting for you, right? Such as I'd still find it. I'd still find it. Okay. <laughs> I want all the purge blocks. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> all right. So congratulations to all of our winners, and again. Uh, you know, to all of you out there, be sure to send in your prints because, hey, you're printing them anyways. Let it, let us see them. We we, we want to see the cool stuff that you guys are making, and yeah. you might win some some filament. Okay, so all right. we, have, we like have some questions out there. Ten ish minutes. I don't know. Yeah, do you have any questions yeah. from Twitter? Okay. Yeah, we've got about ten minutes. Uh, I'm not seeing anything in. I know that YouTube chat. Uh, I know that a uh, very frequent one from last time was the sudden cheats, and we restocked like a few hundred. They lasted like I don't know, maybe two hours. It wasn't that bad; didn't disappear immediately, but they are no longer uh, in stock. So I just checked with, with our eShop guys, and I think we will be able to restock some of them, like the next week, also like a batch, similar batch. So. We'll see. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can set a notification in the eShop if you go onto the product and click the box. Also, the, the sudden sheet is now available for the mini, which is something we promised, and now it actually happened. So that's nice. 
Yeah. I'm not seeing a lot of people asking how are they going to send me the purge blocks. <laughs> eh. so, so if you go, just in case, if you go to my YouTube page on the about, there's a PO box address there. I, I'd recommend only people from Europe ship them because outside of Europe, they would be too expensive. Yeah. It wouldn't be worth it. But if you're in EU, you want to get rid of your purge blocks, by all means, I have a few projects in mind. One of them involves a toilet seat for Pooch. <laughs> <laughs> um, that will have milled aluminum or aluminium. I oh. would say aluminium. <laughs> Someone, well, let me see who's it. It's Zobi is asking if, if we know Luban software. I've heard about it for sure. I don't think I've ever tried it, but I just opened the website yeah. and Luban um, is awesome. It's, um, it's a really good software actually to dissect models, especially if you want to print really large models uh -huh. it can dissect it in squares uh, with the maximum size of your choice. Oh, nice. And also make dowel holes um, inside of the inside of the print, like so you can attach them together with dowels. Right. I think this is something that we talked with the Prusa Slicer team that would be really nice to uh, improve the cut tool to add some kind of functionality like this that you could yeah. connect the pieces but yeah this looks cool need to try it oh yeah that's right it's also for cnc cutting and yep. right 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 yeah now i remember yeah dowels for like registration and and putting things together would be super useful when you're when you're making giant uh, Grecian statues of your your boss, it it would be much easier to uh, <laughs> to assemble those. Brucia <laughs> uh, <laughs> slicer three supports. I'm pretty sure eventually, but that's uh, that's the big big feature that you only can add like one or two every release because the team will yeah. spend uh, a month just implementing the basic thing and then another month, you know, testing and improving it. So I'm pretty sure it will happen, but uh, maybe in like one or two versions, not, we don't know yet. At least I don't know. Uh, can Joe sign my printer? I mean, depends on which Joe you mean, but he said it's just <laughs> J and O. Uh, <laughs> he definitely can. Uh, you can add a note to your order. Just keep in mind that this, we already talked about this the last stream. It may delay the order by quite a bit because instead of going, you know, seamlessly through the process, someone will have to physically take the order out, you know, put it on Joe's desk. He will have to sign it and it will have to go back into the process of shipping. And that can delay it surprisingly quite a lot. Giannis Varkaris is asking about metal 3D printing at home and if it's something that we we think we will see anytime soon. Um, so as far as like direct centering metal metal printing, um, I think there's there's still a long ways off of that. Um, there is a filament out there right now. Um, I, I can't remember who. There are like you. steel fills and B well BASF. I yes, believe. BASF. Thank you. BASF. Yes, the BAS, BASF filament um, that you can actually print, and then you send the part away. Oh, and that's right. It will get debound de and yeah. centered um, off at, at a commercial kiln and, and systems. The problem is, is a lot of that produces off gassing that you don't want yeah. in your home. A lot of that uh, involves, you know, extremely high heat equipment and things like that that just just really isn't necessarily safe for home use. Um, but again, there is this B BASF filament uh, Ultrafuse. Is that it? Yeah, I think that's it. The it's Ultrafuse. It's extremely um, expensive. Extremely expensive. Yes, absolutely. Um, and the service to actually like send it off and center it is is an extra cost yeah. and, and things like that too. So um, uh, there are options if you really want to do it. Uh, I do often go back to the, but why? Um, you know, I, I get it. Some parts you definitely want made out of metal. Um, but if you really look around at your your day to day life of how many things like probably would have been made in metal in the past, but now are made out of plastic. You know, our glasses. You know, a good portion of your car now is plastic instead of <laughs> instead of being metal. Um, uh, we really kind of have transitioned over that that plastics are are very ubiquitous uh, for making many things. So um, 
yeah, maybe question why you need metal rather than can you do metal. So I don't know. That's that's my opinion. And then maybe if if you need it for a metal, if 3D printing is necessary, right. the the right. way yeah. rather rather than traditional machining processes. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, uh, Clifford yeah. asked about the. Uh, big models in our factory. We just recently released the video where we kind of show some of them. For some of them, it even shows the, the assembly process. And yeah, how do we uh, stick them together? Yeah, just lots of glue, honestly, really just su surprisingly, uh, we tried a bunch of glues. That's that's right. I can actually also... Yeah, we, we released an, an article recently about which yes. glues were the, the best for combining your prints. Um, so Precisely, yeah. And surprisingly, uh, one of the best results was a local uh, CA glue, really cheap one from a, a hobby store, because these guys know what they want. They you know glue big, expensive planes and everything, and they don't want the plane to crash because of a bad uh, glue connection. So that's maybe a pro tip to, to look for local uh, groups and shops that, that do these things and ask them for, for help with, with cheap and good glue. Yeah. But yeah, just lots, lots of, lots of glue. Really, that's it. We've got a lot of comments going on about non-planar slicing, um, and someone did ask about five-axis, and five-axis does make that that uh, rather interesting in some ways. Five-axis three D printing, um, but for the most part, uh, and we've discussed this in previous shows that, you know, uh, a few years ago there was the whole non-planar model that was was released, um, and everyone got really excited about that. But there's Pretty limited on on the hardware that we have use cases for that and really hasn't been something that that we've uh, really found investing in versus like all the big bang things that would help so many of us yeah. um, uh, to get into in the Prusa slicer um, so the thing that we've always said is if you guys will show us more use cases more actual models that would benefit and things like that from non uh, uh slicing then that will potentially get us excited, but um, not really, uh, not really a lot of stuff out there that that really makes it worth the while thus far. Oh, Shane, Shane is watching and posting a cute picture. Hey, hey, Shane! <laughs> oh, my mug! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coffee I'm... actually tastes better if, if taken in my uh, my merch. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah, that's a fact. That's scientifically correct. Yeah. Because it has a white stripe on the <laughs> side, so you know stripes make things better. <laughs> Brian asked about uh, a gradient color change in the Z direction for MMU in Prusa Slicer. Wow! So you could do like a dithering. So you, you, I guess you could do like one layer, you know, blue, next one white, then do Two. blue, blue, white, white, and it, from distance it would look cool. Yeah. If you really wanted to do like a gradual change, I'm not really sure. How would the MMU achieve that? I don't think it really has that capability. You, you'd need I, two I, filaments going into one nozzle. Yeah. yeah, which has been, like, I've seen someone try, didn't really look that great. There, there's been there's been a couple that have been, you know, for, for, for true color mixing have been okay, but they've been super experimental. And, you know, I think are going to be very tricky to get working well and get working right. Um, so... Yeah, I, I don't know. But I do I do agree. I think that there could be something fun that's done for something that, you know, you wouldn't see the effect up close, but for a larger model further away where depending on how how often you're switching layers between two different colors starts to blend those those colors together, which is, you know, essentially how our televisions work anyways with like, you know, RGB LEDs inside of them and, and things like that. So yeah. Uh, Clifford, uh, that was the question about the big prints. Maybe I kind of misunderstood it. Misunderstood it. Uh, he meant more about how we split the models into several pieces. And believe it or not, we often just use Prusa Slicer. It's kind of unintuitive in the way that you have to rotate the part first before you make the cut. But when you think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense because the cut is parallel to the print bed and you most likely want to print the part with the flat on the bottom. So you would be rotating it anyway. So yeah, that's that's very often what we yeah. just use. It's the shortcut is the C key and you just rotate the model, 
cut it to multiple pieces and you can repeat this as many times as you want. Of course, for the like really, really big prints, it's probably not ideal. So maybe something like the Luban that we just yeah. uh, looked at would be better. Yeah, uh, net, net fab makes it pretty easy to, or net fab, to, yeah. Slice, yeah. Yeah, to slice your prints too. Uh, okay, um, well actually I think we've got time for one more. If we have anything out there, let's see, do I have anything on Discord? I mean, a quick one is Kashimi paint the colors for the MMU like you can now paint supports. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we are working on that already. <laughs> maybe we've been working on it for kind of years. Oh. But okay. yeah, I'm, I haven't tried anything yet, but something like that might happen in not so far future. There's a Kickstarter that just happened for a third-party application to okay. allow you to allow you to do that. Um, I forget exactly what it is. I did back that, and I think I have access to it now. But um, yeah, there there are some there are some options out there. But now that we've added kind of the paint functionality as is for paint on supports and paint on seam and things like that, I I think it's I think it's pretty realistic to see the potential of yeah. that as well as other paint on functions could you know easily be coming in the future. So yeah. All right. Well, that that's our show for this week. That's our our time. So uh, I'd like to thank Joe uh, Kasha for joining us. Yes, um, it's been it great to have you thank on the show. Me. And a uh, uh, little secret there, Joe was an emergency fill in at the last minute. So I appreciate him being so mm -hmm. willing to come on the show in in such short notice. Um, so I was uh, asking, it wasn't a mistake. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, I I super appreciate it. Um, so thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we will be back in two weeks, uh, and we can't wait to see you guys then. Stay safe, keep printing, and we'll see you later. Take see care. You. Thank you.